So what's going on is that the people who aren't here today, you guys are going to get first dibs on when we carve up the books. And mm -hmm. so being here live is helpful for that. And then the people, um, although there's a few that have been claimed by uh, people that like were early adopters and helping us with certain things. So, but that's only and partially because Keith and I wanted to do an example so everybody could see. And so I did three stigmata and Keith is working on Ubik. And we will look at three stigmata and it's convenient timing since everyone did that for the class. Um, we will look at three stigmata as an example and I'll go through it with a screen share so you can see how we did three stigmata and parts of Ubik. And eventually that's how everyone else is gonna do the research. So let me kind of backtrack again and start on what the project is. So um, since we're recording now, sorry to repeat myself a little bit. So the idea is to that we wanna create a Philip K. Dick encyclopedia. And being that there's 44 novels, now some of those are um, the mainstream novels and they'll have less of this. But what we want to do is we had we've developed a bunch of categories of things that we think should be in there, like and we'll go through those in a minute, like technology, political affiliations, fake religions, stuff like that. And what we want to do is make a comprehensive volume that has that's like a resource guide for all these Philip K. Dick terms and things that are in all the books. And if we divide it, and eventually we're going to have, let's say we get a total of, you know, 20 uh, in the first round, because we have a lot of people that couldn't make it today, but want, want to do this. So if we get 20 and we tackle in the first round, we all work together and we tackle 20 of the novels and let's say three of the collected short stories. Then once we complete that, we can kind of do another round and go through until, and the thing is Keith and I, we'd like to do this quick, but we have no timeline. We're not gonna rush anyone. We're not gonna rush this project because this is a, a living document that, or a document that's gonna live forever. And so we wanna do this right. And um, and the idea basically is, is this is going to become a really valuable resource for anyone researching Phil K. Dick. And we see it as something that could end up in libraries and be like a resource guide. Think about like the Dune Encyclopedia that was made in the 80s that existed for forever and, you know, became this really valuable guide. Um, and I'm really stoked that Lord Running Clams here because... Um, he created the Pink Beam Companion, which is like a, such a valuable resource for Phil's life. And New edition was, coming out. Yeah. And um, what I see this as is like a similar thing. And by us all working together on, as, on it as a team, then it's something that we, we can all take ownership on. Now, Keith and I are going to do the final work of alphabetizing and editing and putting it together as a book. And so for that reason, with that kind of work, we're gonna be on the spine probably, but um, everyone's names who's gonna be a researcher, on the back cover, we're gonna have a list of everyone who was a researcher on it. And let's say, and I'm just picking um, Bill, right? Bill Richards. So let's say Bill takes, um game players of titan i'm just randomly picking right then inside the book and the back we'll have the list of the researchers you'll get a bio and it'll say which books you researched and then you become the game players of titan uh expert right and where that comes into play is that um and many people don't know this, but Josh Boone, who um, unfortunately made this terrible version of The Stand recently, the Stephen King's The Stand, he's developing a, a movie of Game Players of Titan right now. And I know this because my buddy Cody Goodfellow was working on the script. Um, you know, and, and it may or may not ever get made, but um, 
uh, <laughs> hold on, let's see. Oh, Cliff didn't get the. Hold on, let me just really quickly send Cliff the uh, invitation. <laughs> Does anybody have him? All oh, right, well, hold on. I can uh, I can send him the link. Yeah. Uh, talking send, about yeah, Cliff Jones. Right? Talking. Yeah, send Cliff the link. And um. And so, let's say Bill becomes the game player as a Titan person. Then they if they go into production. They probably contact us and say, hey, I saw, can we talk to Bill? Because we're making this movie of Game Players of Titan, and he's the Game Players of Titan expert, right? And if we have a world, you know, a man who japed expert and somebody's working on an article, then they're going to become the expert of this book. So it's one of the other, th the fringe benefits, fringe benefits that you might get by becoming an expert on a random Philip K. Dick book. And, um, you know, beyond the fact that personally, I think this is going to be a lot of fun doing this project. And you'll see, like, I had a ton of fun going through Three Stigmata for this because I found lots of things that were hilarious and um, and just really cool little neat tidbits that I didn't notice until I was doing this. Um, and, until I was like doing this i just didn't notice a lot of these aspects so some of them they're going to be really fun and um we're not like i said i don't want anyone to think that we're going to put any pressure i would like to see the first round done by the end of the summer possibly but um when we get done with doing the examples and we start assigning we can talk to people about their timeline and the other thing that we're going to do is for example if Bill, T I'm going to keep picking on you, Bill, just because you're right by me on the Zoom. So let's say Bill does does Game Players of Titan. When he gets to starting on it, my idea is that I want to meet with everybody individually and do the first chapter together. Because to if, and if you feel you need that support or you want that support, if you don't want it, that's fine. Because um, I'm going to, we're going to go through the first chapter here and you can refer back to this video. And if, you know, I just want everyone to feel supported when they're doing this. And um, like I said, I'm going to go through my system for it. And then um, when you get done, um, we're going to send you a form that you fill out. It has everything alphabetical. And as you fill it out, let's say in August, you finish it between now and August and you send it to us. Then we're going to have, then Keith and I are going to collaborate with you, probably have a one-on-one -on -one meeting where we go through the book and help you out with it. And then as each book comes in, then we will be inserting all the terms into the wider document. And when we do that, then hopefully if we get enough researchers and we only have to do one round, great. Um, if we, we have a couple books left, then we'll probably do another call out and do a second round. Um, I, we're definitely going to have more than are here today. Um, and, and for example, um, you know, I, I mean, I just got an email like five minutes ago, like, Hey, just give me whatever book you want. I can't make it today. So we're gonna, we're gonna have more help than this. And then as we, we'll start a Facebook group, like a private Facebook group where everybody can chat online so you can share and, and collaborate. Like, you know, let's say you're like, oh man, I was on chapter five and I saw this thing and I'm wondering what's everyone's opinion. Is this, you know, something I should list or not? We can chat about those things and continue to kind of build a community around this. And um, I know I explained this already, but one more time because we're recording. The idea is we're all volunteers. Keith and I are not making money off this. Um, so what we're all doing is volunteering our time, but hopefully, you know, by becoming experts in these things, it, it might turn into something that you can sell articles. You can, um, you know, like uh, consult for movies or that kind of thing. Um, so there are lucrative opportunities like down the line, but 
the idea for this book is that it's not a money-making venture for us individually. The idea is that it's going to support the community because, and you know, and it's funny because uh, Lord Running Clam, I was trying to figure out how I'm getting to Fort Morgan just this morning, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. And, um, you know, and I grumpily, like everyone knows I complain like, because I'm a Californian and I'm like, why are we in Santa Ana, you know, like, why are we in Berkeley? Um, and, uh, but I know one of the reasons why we're not, we haven't been doing a lot of these in the past is expensive to do stuff in California. And hopefully that the money from this project can help to do things um, in these expensive areas. And also if we, if it does well enough, we could see things where we could do scholarships for, um, you know, folks like, um, you know, Zach Wood, who's like one of the most awesome um, PKD people, like Zach is awesome. Right and he doesn't have the money to come to the festival this year. And wouldn't it be awesome if in the future we could, you know, start bankrolling like scholarships because we have this book that's generating money. And I'm not saying it's going to sell that many. I don't know. But it's it's the dream of this. And the idea is, is that we all volunteer our time to make something that benefits the whole community. Does anybody have uh, any questions I, so far? Yeah, can I interject here, David? Yeah. Um, that's really what, what you just, just laid out is really what I was trying to do, or I am trying to do here in Fort, well, not here, but in Fort Morgan. And uh, uh, all, the, all the proceeds from uh, Henri and I's uh, publishing company, Wide Books, uh, go to uh, supporting this, these festivals in Fort Morgan have done since uh, the 2017. Um, mm -hmm. It's likely that I will not be doing another, I personally will not be doing another festival in Fort Morgan after this one. I'm going to retire from FAND. But um, you guys take it up there and out there in California. And I like, I like what, what you're proposing because it falls exactly in line with what I proposed uh, with the scholarships, the uh, resident scholars and artists and the whole thing. But yeah. Fort Morgan is, uh, is not, it's not moving. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, what are you going to do? Right. Well, and, and for example, like one of the things like in the past, you know, they had a PKD fest at, at Fullerton, but then everyone was, you know, we lost a connection because the woman who was so connected to the papers retired. Uh, but they have a new librarian who I've met when I was there doing research, and she really wants to get involved with uh, PKD yeah. because she realizes how valuable the PKD papers are to the, to the library. And in that gap, they tried to do something at Fullerton and it didn't work because the person who was working in the gap didn't understand the value of it. But now uh, Parisa, who's there, she, um, I'm probably saying her name wrong, but um, you know she's super excited about like doing something again in the future. So one of the things in doing this is 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 to do that. So um, before the the um, yeah, an East Coast um, conference would be great. And uh, Gabriel, you can just um, unmute and talk if you want at any point. Just interrupt me. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's just a side thought. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, um, I want this to be collaborative and everybody can talk and ask questions while I'm doing this. The, uh, so how this is going to go forward is I'm going to show you guys the sample for Three Sigmata and Ubik. And then when we, we get done with that, um, then we'll start doing assignments. Uh, we'll start figuring it out. Um, and um, you can, that way you can see like, when I show you like how it's done, if you can start thinking about the books that you're like, oh man, I would really like to do that book or, or whatever. Um, and uh, let's see. Um, okay. Yeah, an East Coast conference would be good, Gabriel. Let's okay. Let me share screen. You guys get to see how messed up my uh, desktop is. You can see I am footnoting unfinished PKD to, right now. That is what I was working on this morning. So here's the sample. Um, 
So these are the categories we're looking for. Technology, characters, terminology, company and organization names, locations, alien species, religions, real life connections. That's going to be, um, that one is less important to me. And that one is for the geeks who do um, the uh, all the biography stuff. I don't expect researchers to connect all the real life connections. That one might be me and Keith on the back end. Um, <clears throat> but if you find them, find them. But um, don't like stress out, like I got to read the biographies before doing this because I think Keith and I will probably catch most of those. Um, psychic abilities, something I call Phil science. <laughs> um, and then alternate politics. Um, we're open to suggestions, especially once we start um, collaborating in the Facebook group. Um, like if you start seeing things like, oh, I keep seeing like um, this particular thing, then um, we're open to suggestions. Okay, and I, the sample was compiled by me and Keith. Uh, using the three stigmata of Paul, and we'll share this with you so you'll get to have this. Using three stigmata of Palmer Eldridge and Ubik, I did uh, three stigmata and Keith did Ubik. He's I'm still, still, I'm still doing it actually, but yeah. Um, good process. And so we're going to start with numbers. So, like for Ubik, we have the 1002 domestic jukebox. <laughs> right um and for three sigmata and chat and what what we do with each one is you put the name of the book and the chapter because there's going to be different editions so you don't need to do actual page numbers because that's going to change so we're just going to do chapters so like for example i just put three stig chapter five for 3D time lapse slides, a visual record Palmer Eldridge used of his trip to the Prox system. Okay, so letter A, and I'm not gonna go through every single one, but I'm just gonna do a couple here and there for examples. So for example, this, this first one, the anti-thermal curtain, a massive curtain hung over New York City to keep down sun exposure from chapter seven of Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldridge. Now I guarantee a bunch of you read Three Stigmata maybe once, maybe twice, and maybe you didn't even notice that. But what I did is when I went through, I had two highlighters and every time I saw a term that I thought I would eventually do, I do it in pink and then I would do whatever, because my book's already highlighted in, in yellow quite a bit. And what I would do is I would do a chapter at a time and then I would go in and I'd say, okay, I have an A and I have a C and then I would type the name and then the definition. Now, an interesting second one here is the Artiforg. Now, the reason why the Artiforg is an interesting one is because that's one that we will see in multiple books. And if you see one that is in multiple books, then what I wrote here was an artificial organ first appeared in the penultimate truth. In that novel, they are only available for the wealthy and powerful in the government. And now wait for last year, they help people live for hundreds of years in Ubik Glen Runster is believed to have several. The technology appears in many novels. So what I'm going to do is, and I should have done this already, is put various. And if you see one that's various, like you can just note it and give that to me and Keith and we'll do that. But if you want to do the research, if you want to find one, the problem is, that we're probably all like precogs, artiforgs, con apps. We've already done them. <laughs> the ones that are are there. So we don't want you to repeat your work. However, if you see an instance of using it, you can put it, you can make one for that individual book. And for example, if the now wait for last year person was like, oh yeah, it's used in this, and maybe we didn't catch that then we can add it in. So you can still like do the version for your book. Um, 
like auto fact here. Um, Robotic self-replicating factories, the term is used throughout PKD canon, but first appeared in the story of the same name published in Galaxy Magazine in 1955. So with the various ones, we're going to go back to the origins and we're going to make sure that we have like the first use of it. And you can see some of the things like we have very, you know, from chapter one of Ubik, Atlas Interplan Van and Storage, the company that delivers bodies to be loaded into Half-Life. Like, and so what I did when I did the first chat, you know, when I went through Keith's work for the first chapter is then I went through and if there was something that, you know, we kind of talked it out together and I'm like, okay, well here, I want to add this one. That was one that I added. And um, the idea being is that we're looking for these things that are, that's a name of a company. So that's, one of the categories another one that keith got was beloved brethren of moratorium the beloved brethren moratorium for example swiss half-life moratorium owned by herbert schonheit von vogelson um and then actually this one is incorrect so i thought i had the most updated version but um so another fun one in this section from ubic is Bonds Erotic Polymorphic Experience Motel, a 60-unit subsurface hotel catering to businessmen and hookers. <laughs> and then, like I said, I'm not going to go through all of them, but these are some of the fun ones. So you can see here, too, there's CONAP, and then we did a really long one where we talked about the definition of condominiums <laughs> and where it started. And why it relates to the fact that, for example, man, the man who japed has a con app in it, but it's not called a con app because condominium as a term wasn't in regular use. So he wasn't using that term yet. And that's something that's interesting. Um, and it appears that the first use of con app was Cantana 140, which was in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, which is interesting, by the way, for those of you been in the class because Tony Boucher was the editor on that. So, um, some of these I found are like super weird and random. Like some are obvious, like from Three Stigmata, Doctor Smile, like the suitcase. Like everybody's gonna think, you know, that's an obvious one. The um, what is interesting is that it's a portable extension, and one of the things that I noticed when I was writing the definition is that the um, the main unit of Dr. Smile is in the basement of his con app, which was like a really weird and interesting detail. And I didn't, I hadn't noticed that before. But one of these here is a weird one. Doberman's Law, uh, named after the first man to get married and divorced on Mars. The name refers to quick Martian relationships. And I'm just looking for, when I'm going through, like you're reading it differently and I, my suggestion is, you know, instead of read like when you read for pleasure, I sat there with a the highlighter going through and when I saw names or things or terms or whatever, you know, um, it's just definitely a different reading experience. Um, let me see. And I'll, I show you some of these just because they're some of them are just fucking hilarious. The Ganymedian Wap Frog Croquette. This was a food mentioned in chapter two of Three Stigmata. Um, so, um, David, please. someone's asking about characters. We are doing characters, but I think we're, we talked about putting them in a separate section. Yeah, right? we'll get to characters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for following the chat. Um, here's an interesting example. Grables. There's um, in Three Stigmata, there's a mention just offhandedly that they're in uh, Marilyn Monroe, New Jersey. A character lives in Marilyn Monroe, New Jersey, and he mentions the temperature is such and such grables. Like it's it's 1.45 grables is the temperature, which means nothing, right? Um, but I noticed it, and then I was like, and some of you might who are friends with me on Facebook will know I posted like, what the fuck was he talking about? Grables. 
like because it's obviously an in joke or just a random thing that he just like pulled out of the air and so what we wrote for it was uh, or what i wrote for it was a phil science scale measuring the melting of glaciers uh this is likely a random assignment meant as an in joke that phil never assumed a researcher would be trying to figure out 60 years later the scene is set in Marilyn monroe new jersey a unit of measurement might be a joke about betty grable Again, I doubt Phil predicted researchers would be trying to figure this out. And I don't expect everyone to catch all these, but if you see one and you don't know what it is, that's where you can go to the community and say, mm -hmm. like, hey, what the hell is he talking about? And if we don't know, a good resource that we have is like Bill Cyril. And I will show you one in a little bit that Bill Cyril caught that is just totally insane. But if Bill wasn't there, we'd never get it because it requires knowing Phil, knowing opera, knowing Phil's opera collection. And we happen to have a guy that sat around and spun opera records with Phil. And we were lucky that we had that for that situation. Are we gonna catch all these? Hell no. But if we do catch them, that's awesome, you know? And, yeah, whatever we don't catch will be in the uh, second edition. Yeah, exactly. Um, a cool one that Keith found, the Havana Super Saver Cigarette Dispenser. Uh, a fiction, a fictionist device uh, mentioned in the novel. While not extensively described, it can be inferred as a type of vending machine specifically designed to dispense cigarettes. Um so let me see if there's any other really interesting ones. Um, you can see here, and when you, I suggest reading through these and looking at Three Stigmata, just so you can see the example of the things that I'm trying to go for and Ubik. Ubik, we don't have quite as done um, as uh, Three Stigmata, but for example, here's like an, an example, uh, James Riddle Veterans Hospital Base 3. This is the hospital on Ganymede that Palmer Eldridge is taken to for recovery after his return from Prox. Um, and you can see here, I've got it all. I, I organized it by alphabet and then the version you're gonna be filling out, you'll have the alphabet there and you can plug them in. You don't have to have them perfectly in order within that, We will get we will do that. Just get it in the right letter. That's all we're asking. Um, and some of the, um, oh, it's 4.62 Grables because I mentioned that in the melting of the glacier old skin top. <laughs> um, let me see. So you can see some of the things that, there's a lot of people. Is this going to be, is this going to be like a single like Google Doc that we're all working on, or are we going to kind of keep our separate things and su submit them to you? Yeah, you're going to do your separate ones and submit it to us. Yeah. So for whichever book that you're doing, like you'll do your separate version, and then the the master document will be Keith and I's problem. <laughs> we will do that, um, which is going to be like insane. Um, a lot of prox things here for three stigmata. And one I want to point out just because it shows like some of the things I'm kind of looking for. Um, Renown 33. This is the name of Bonnie Marison's CONAP building in New York City. The Homeowners Association has a code against children. When Emily Marison becomes pregnant, Barney elects to get a divorce rather than lose his CONAP. And it says that CONAPs 34, 33 and 34 are considered low range CONAPs, but they're still hard to get in. So these are details that I think are fascinating or really interesting about what he was saying about this particular building. And, you know, it's a good example of the things we're trying to look for. Uh, Resurrection Day there, which is the holiday on which half-lifers are publicly honored in chapter one of Ubik. This is a good example. Um, 
the Sigma 14B, that's Leo Bolero's orbital home. And then I also have the Sigma 14B memorial plaque. Um, one that's interesting. Yeah, see, this isn't the most recent version of the file. I'm going to have to look for it. Um, I knew that. Okay. Yeah, so the Sir Francis Drake Conap. This is one we talked about in the in the class on Tuesday, because this is obviously the Sir Francis Drake was the name of the hotel that Phil. This is a real life connection one. That's the name of the highway that Phil took to Point Reyes was the St. Francis Drake Highway, but it was also the name of the hotel where he went to his first science fiction convention. So these are details that I don't expect everyone to get, but these are things that, you know, if you find these things, great. If you don't, we'll we'll get to them. And um, yeah, I'm really mad this is not the most recent version. I My computer died the other day. And I know I have a more recent version of it somewhere. Okay, Triplanetary Law Enforcement, Truffle Skins. There's some of the UN stuff. Here's the one that Bill caught. The Wagner temperature scale. In the roasting climate of three stigmata of Palmer Eldridge, New York City has reached 180 degrees, also referred to as the 20 Wagner mark. The weather in Maryland, Monroe, New Jersey is referred to being 1.46 Wagner's hotter than the day before. This appears to be Phil science. And then I wrote, note, when we asked Phil's good friend, William Sorrell, why Phil made this reference, and I just quoted Bill, random assignment representing an extreme, perhaps musically speaking, Wagner seemed extreme to audiences at the time. The ring of, and I don't even know how to pronounce this, Nibelungs um, and Paris, whatever, were operas that he passionately loved. Perhaps Phil was thinking of the magic fire music from act three of Wagner's Die Valkyrie the second of the operas in the ring cycle, or maybe even the twilight of the gods in the final opera of the ring cycle in which Walla and the gods are consumed by flames at the end of act three, when the world is renewed. Like what a deep cut joke that is. But, um, and I ended up just quoting the whole thing because I think Bill should just like his whole train of thought on that is interesting. And um, these are things that we are going to be able to do it like as they say in movies in post so for example if you find something that you're not quite sure what it means like we have these resources we have linda for example linda castellini who hung out with him too tim powers people we can call on to be like hey what do you think phil was was thinking with these things um yeah and then we're just gonna have characters after that um if you look at the document where the, uh, not the assignment, the uh, sample, I don't know, hold on. Uh, oh no, this is the one where I'm gonna figure out. Um, give me a second here. Um, okay. So when we have the um, version that you're going to fill out, sample for researchers, here it is. Oh, no, that's not the right one. Give me a second. Researcher form to fill out. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So um, you'll do researcher name, your name, novel or collection you're doing, your bio. This will have the categories you look up and then you can fill in stuff her letter and then characters we have that too where you can do character names through here 
Now, an important thing to know about characters is that, for example, whoever ends up with a simulacra, there's like 50 characters in the simulacra. And not all of them are important. <laughs> um, so use your judgment. Like, what characters are important? And don't, none of this, get. don't ever get stressed that you're not catching everything. This is collaborative. And when we get to the second phase and when we're going through all this, Keith and I are going to be able to help you do the second phase. And so don't feel any pressure to get it exactly right. What you're doing is, you know, helping the community and us out to get as much of this as we can. And if we get it, great. If we don't, there's there's going to be multiple layers of going through this. And um, what I want is that I had a lot of fun doing Three Stigmata because it's really fun to look at the books this way. And for example, like one that I think is going to be insanely fun is uh, Galactic Pot Healer, for example, has all kinds of hilarious stuff in it. Or, and some of the books that may not be as popular or aren't as good, like Dr. Futurity or Vulcan's Hammer, which I actually think Vulcan's Hammer is underrated, but whatever, that, that's a longer debate, um, will be fun to do for this project because there'll be all kinds of fun made up technology and ridiculous fill science and things like that. So some of the books that you might not think are that great will be fun to do. And we know that Vulcan's Hammer has been in and out of uh, development hell for Hollywood for a while. So that might be a smart one to pick up. Um, and, you know, obviously you're, um, no one has claimed, uh, one person has asked me, I think Shannon, I'm not sure Shannon's here. Shannon asked me to do, do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. And I was surprised that Shannon, he was the first person to actually ask me, does anyone have that? So when we get to assignments, that's not, um, you know, when we get to dibbing all this out, um, just keep in mind that, um, you know, There'll be chance. There'll be other chances too, and also we're all going to collaborate and kind of work on things together. So you'll have you'll get a chance to look at all the books. All right. Do, um, what did I miss? Do you have any questions? Um, does that make sense? Um, does this look like fun? Um, have I scared anyone off? <laughs> um, anything like that? Does anyone? Because no. otherwise, we I just want to ask. I just asked, can I get first dibs on the Unteleported Man? That's my favorite novel, and I'd love to address it right off the bat. Um, Lord Running Claim, you just took the first claim. So, yeah. All like, right. Doing claims. Let me, um, yeah, I got to share a screen on that. Um, I got to uh, do lies, Inc. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah I'll do that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that one was not taken. L let me pull the assignments up. I mean, it's just going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I am going to obviously do the unfinished stuff because nobody else has that. Um, but, uh, and just for everybody who came here, when we stop recording, if you want to hang around, I'll give people a little preview. I'll show you guys some of the unfinished stuff just as a reward for having uh, shown up. Um uh, so I'm going to do volume one of the collected stories, but we're going to do the collected stories that one through five. So um, that way we know we get all the short stories. So doing the short stories is going to be like an, uh, an interesting, intense one. Cliff, you claimed the world Jones made and I gave it to you. So thank you. <laughs> um my homie from the Dickheads podcast, Anthony Trevino, told me he would murder me if I did not let him have Solar Lottery. So he's getting Solar Lottery. Um, plus, we're we're rereading Solar Lottery for a special bonus episode of Dickheads coming up. So it made sense for him to do that. 
Cam Mitchell really wanted time out of joint. He's not here. So if anybody wants to usurp him, you can, but then you have to deal with Cam. Um, because he really wanted that one. I did three stigmata. Keith took Ubik. And other than that, we're open. I kind of I don't think there's gonna be oh, one thing I should mention. The the way Phil wrote and did world building. The first couple chapters are intense with these terms. But as the books go on, he he drops a lot of that. So just keep in mind that the first couple chapters, you might be thinking, oh, my God, this is going to be insane. I'm going to have so many terms. But trust me, there's more of them in the first half of the books than there are in the second half. You'll you'll notice it. And um, as somebody who pays a lot of attention to the world building things for the podcast, um, one that I think if somebody wants to, oh, wait, so I'm going to add Lord Running Clam for uh, Unteleported Man. Where am I? Right here. Uh, in the chat, Chris Pepin was asking for uh, the Man in the High Castle. Oh, yeah. And Bryce wants game players of Titan. Okay. Bryce wants game players. Okay. Uh, Bill Richards is asking about blow my tears. Uh, no one has taken that one. That's a good that's one. That's one of my other favorite ones. Yeah, I love that. Who who wanted that one? Um, who was that? Bill Richards. Bill Richards. Okay. Lucky man. Um, dude, who wants Galactic Popular? I'm telling you. So who far, would... nobody. <laughs> so far, nobody. Uh, I probably Andrew... there are like three different ones I want to do. So, yeah. well, if you want to do more than one, you can. You can certainly offer to do that. We're not expecting these due till the summer. So, for me, I could yeah. do more than one between now and then because I'm pretty quick. But, um, you know, if you want to take more than one, well, if you're here. For the meeting, you have that privilege, and you well, can. Can speak I call? Up. You don't have to do it in the chat, by the way. Can I call Valis and uh, our friends from Frolics Eight then? Okay, so I, I don't think there's going to be much in Valis. That's one of the reasons I want to do one of the really pulpy ones because I think it's going to have a lot. Yeah, um, Valis is real world, expert world for Valis. So <laughs> yeah, Valis is set in the real world, kind of. That was Gabriel. Yeah. There's a few more in the chat. Okay, hold on. Um, and what was the other one you wanted to do, Gabe? Our friends. Uh, Frolic Eight. Oh, dude, that one will be fun. I think so. Yeah, I, that, I've always thought that one was underrated. Um, if anyone wants to do Zap Gun, you're gonna yeah, have me, to work. me, 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 me. Who wants that? Laura Running Clam. I was just about to mention that I'd like to do Zap Gun. I might do it before doing the Unteleported Man, as it will give me a sort of intro to how to do it. Okay, yeah, I love Zappa. Um, Lord Running Clam, you're going to have a special assignment then to work with me because we're we're going to also do the outline, that the un unfinished outline. But we have that. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Good. Um, I should I should put outline and outline because the oh, outline good. is amazing, even though he didn't write it. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see. All right, so we have some other ones in the chat. Hit me up, Keith. Uh, Chris Pepin also asked for a Galactic Pot Healer. Okay. Did did we say Maze of Death yet? Because uh, Andrew Lindsay was saying that. Andrew wants Maze of Death? Okay. Yeah. Andrew L. Okay. Um, Eric Dieter wanted Crap Artist. Ah, uh, yeah. That's that's one of the only um, mainstream novels I put in the main feed here because I think there's going to be a lot. Eric. Now, what I was thinking about doing with the other mainstream novels is just have one person who's really passionate about the mainstream novels go through it or do it at the end because there's not going to be a lot. Because I just read, like, for example, I just read Lumpke and Puttering. And I was looking for things and there was like really not much that I would add there because it's like real world stuff. So right. you don't need to put a, you know, 
in technology, television. You know? Right, exactly. Yeah, because he didn't invent that. <laughs> yeah, he didn't I mean, invent that. But it, it, like a major character. Luke. <laughs> yeah, we will have to do the characters. That's true. But one of the good things is, is that Lord Running Clam has done a lot of that work for us already. <laughs> right, right. But the characters. So that's one of the reasons why I wasn't as worried about the characters because honestly, like there's character lists online and we can go through and determine like, oh, this one's big enough for listing in the character guide and this one, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so, okay, did anybody else? Because there are people that will want to claim some. They're just, they're not here. So, um, or they'll have to take our scraps. Because <laughs> we were here. Um, uh, Eric? Uh, wants Alamo radio free Alamo. Oh, I was just about to say that one, but that that's in the, you know. But I I figured I'll do my first one and then we'll see what's left. That's what I'm doing. I'm just gonna survive my first one and see what's left after that. Um. All right. Is there anybody else who wants to grab one now? I know my buddy Jay from India wants to do one, but he said he he would uh, pick up one that didn't get chosen um i think one that would be interesting I, i'm surprised nobody wanted martian time slip that one's gonna be heavy um i feel like a lot of us would probably have conflict on our third choices <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like yeah martian time slip is like on the list of like 10 that i would like to do but <laughs> yeah all right so Let's talk about timeline then, and let me get everybody's feedback. What do you guys think about the um, like August as a as a as a first round due date? Because that gives us plenty of time. Um, let's see, it's March now, so do we need that much time, or do we think we can do it by June? What does everybody think about June as a? Is that too I, early? I mean, I think August would be better for me. I got a lot going on right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> that's good feedback yeah yeah let's do august does anybody have a problem with august speak uh, now yeah. forever hold your peace okay um and if we finish sooner we can just you know let you know and pick up yeah another, maybe yeah, you get bonus yeah. points <laughs> you get to start on your second one right yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i knew no one's gonna take civil hack records <laughs> That character name was that's gonna be, gonna be so much stuff in that one. That one's gonna be that one's gonna be a hard one. Um, I do think um, penultimate truth will be a, will be a fun one. Um, oh, and some of those penultimate truths is a good example. There are feeder short stories, right? To that. So um, yeah, nobody took one of the the collected stories. That's interesting. Oh, that reminded me of a question. Yeah, I think the story lists are slightly different for the three different editions of the collected stories uh, between like the Citadel Twilight and the Subterranean and the I think it was Underwood Miller did the first yeah. edition. So I think we, we should just use Citadel the, Twilight. We, Citadel Twilight. Okay. That's a good that um, is a good call. Uh, can, can I can I ask something? Uh, it seems like a, a, a lot of people have tackled this sort of thing before. You know, I was thinking of Perry Kinman and his Rousel even his uh, compilation of all the all the drug references in in a number of uh, Phil's stories. Is this would we be referring to external sources like that? Yes, and what we can do when we have the Facebook group is we can share those things, and that way um, we can um, take advantage of that, and that'll be like a good way for us to all collaborate and do that. Or is everybody okay with doing that? on facebook or do it yeah 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 um because i know there's like different... <laughs> oh come on Lord Ryan Clem. you've been doing better on facebook joe chip yeah i have uh -huh. and um but the other thing too is is that if you don't feel comfortable like you can always send emails to me and keep um yeah so uh let me go over to um the the form you guys are going to have, and I will add um, my email and Keith's. 
So you can um, contact us that way. You'll have that. It's, it's EI, by the way. I know. My uh, dyslexia getting the best of me. And you just want Keith at Choir? Keith at Choir.com, yeah. Yeah. You actually got choir. That's a yeah. That's thing. that's the hardest one. <laughs> hey, choir published my new book. That's right. Yeah. Speaking of, Ooh. um, all right. So, uh, any any questions? Any last questions on that? I, uh, I'll stop recording. Unless anybody has. All right. I'm going to stop recording.